So recently, we, we have a, a set of skeptics, or some skeptics, that have proposed that skepticism doesn't have anything to do with the God question. Hmm. What do you think about that there? Um, I don't know one skeptic worth of salt. I, I don't think I actually know one skeptic who says, you're not allowed to be skeptical of God's existence, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone hectoring someone else and telling them certain questions or ideas are off limits. I, in, in other words, I think that's a misunderstanding of uh, the dialogue, the conversation around these issues. Um, I have heard uh, some atheist activists who might not also have a foot in this scientific skepticism stuff exclaim that they feel excluded for being atheists. That's a paradox because I get emails from religious folks saying, uh, I'm excluded because I'm religious. So if you're getting it from both ends, maybe you're doing something right. But um, it just so happens that all of the principles associated with the James Randi Educational Foundation, I'm talking about our fellows and our, uh, uh, I think maybe with one exception, um, Randy, of course, myself, uh, many of our supporters, we, we are atheists. Now, we didn't arrive at atheism because we applied scientific skepticism to claims that can be empirically evaluated. We arrived at it because I think, I'm, maybe I don't speak for everyone that I just mentioned, but I, I'm an atheist because there's just no compelling evidence for God's existence. Sure. So you don't believe things for which there's no good evidence. If you consistently apply that principle, it's going to overturn a lot of beliefs, including the God belief. But that's different. That's a sort of rational um, inquiry into that claim. That's different than this field or discipline that we call scientific skepticism, sure. which has its own history and scholarship and scope that says, as a scientific skeptic, I'm going to treat only those claims uh, that can be uh, tested, this whole testable claims thing. If someone says to me, God exists uh, because I feel his presence, or an alien visited me at, last night, but he happens to be invisible and left no actual evidence, you need faith, you know, whatever sure. formulation there, the scientific skeptic says, Sorry, can't get at that question. I'm doing scientific skepticism over here, which looks at evidence. You're not presenting it, any evidence. Number one, I have no reason to believe you because you haven't presented it, any evidence, but that's not the same thing as uh, testing a claim. Sure. It's just not assenting to a belief. But if you came to me instead and said, God exists because of this miracle, this miracle is proof, a weeping, icon, uh, stigmata, blood coming out of the palm of my hand, or um, uh, you know, some other uh, testable claim, that's well within the scope of this field called scientific skepticism. Right. And I just want to uh, underscore, ain't nobody telling anybody, you're not allowed to be skeptical of God. Yes. Scientific skeptics say, when we do this work over here, we're only looking at testable claims. And I, I think that's an absolutely, like, probably one of the most important distinctions that can be made because, like you said, it, we're, we're still looking at evidence, but on, on the rational side, it's saying, well, you haven't presented a single piece that I can examine. And so there's no reason to believe it, warrant exactly. that belief. Exactly. And that's different than if someone brings me a cast of a Bigfoot print and says, you know, here's evidence of Bigfoot, and you evaluate it and you realize it's fishy or something. Right? Um, someone brings you uh, Mary on a piece of toast and says that's evidence of God, uh, you can reject that that's evidence of God. You say, no, that's not good evidence, whatever, right? Yeah, it's, you, you, you almost immediately, in most cases, will go pareidolia and yeah. move on. Yeah, it's exactly. the difference between um, not accepting and debunking, mm, I right. guess, is a good right. way to you know, I like that distinction. I don't always really like the word debunking, Debunk, but what course. you mean by that is the sort of skeptical inquiry that digs into questions, looks at evidence, and then tries to um, solve a case or figure something out uh, in the spirit of science. So, uh, to argue by analogy, you know, how do you solve a crime scene? 
Uh, you go using the best investigative methods and you get evidence, you collect data, you evaluate it, you're sort of trained in a specialty, it's a field. Well, when you look at paranormal claims or you study uh, parapsychology, it's the same sort of thing. You're, uh, get, you're gathering data, you're looking at evidence. That's so far removed from the lion's share of theology, which is not really empirical, you know? Yeah. It's philosophical, it's argumentation, people present reasons, uh, you know, you evaluate those reasons, but no one's saying, here's one unit of proof of God, or here's, here's uh, physical evidence, right? And that's, gee, that's why you need faith, because there ain't no physical evidence. What Hebrews 11, 1, you know? Sure. Faith is a substance of things not seen. If you could see it, you don't need faith, right? Yeah. But many paranormalists and parapsychologists, uh, uh, people engaging in what I would call pseudoscience, they don't say you need faith. They say, we got hard evidence. Here's video of a ghost last night. Yeah. Or um, the claim that I could talk to dead people. And uh, that stuff you could dig into by looking at the actual evidence. Yeah. Um, no, I 100% agree about that, because mm -hmm. uh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. As Jesus says in the book of John, bad paraphrase, but sure. the house of skepticism has many rooms. So I say, go find your room. You wanna focus on weird claims, do that over here. You wanna argue theology, do that over there. No one should hector anyone else about uh, what their priorities are. There's a lot of dismissiveness when people say, oh, they're, they're Bigfoot skeptics, as if that's a bad thing, as right. if prioritizing this field, this, I think, noble tradition, this intersection of science education and consumer protection and sort of folklore and cultural anthropology, all of the stuff that the skeptics movement does, as if that's bad when other people say, why you care about that? You should be caring about the big kuna, you know, debunking God, right? I say to each his own, we'll all find our own levels. I, I kind of like that analogy with the house because <coughs> it, it, it's almost as if, you know, as skeptics all live in the same house, we just happen to live in separate rooms. Right, right. <laughs> and we can move rooms, sure. you know? some. I'm a big damned atheist. Uh, some days I'm really focused on this thing over here. Other days I like arguing theology, you know. Uh, some of my best friends are the sorts of atheists whose idea of a good time is just arguing about another reason why God doesn't exist, right? I have church-state friend activists, church-state separation friends, um, uh, whose idea of a good time is just Xing out and God we trust on all their dollar bills. I'm not going to go hector them about, you know, why are you doing that? Why aren't you instead caring about global warming? Right? Sure. You know, sure. to each his own. Um, and, and I guess ca conferences like TAM are kind of like uh, the living room or the kitchen where everyone kind of gets together all at the same time. That is a damn good metaphor because, you know, the amazing meeting is an opportunity for people to come from around the world to talk about uh, the impact and positive effect of applying skepticism in all areas of their lives, right? So uh, what I really get happy about regarding TAM is all the organizations coming together to help put on the event. We have Dawkins Foundation, Foundation Beyond Belief, uh, uh, Institute for Science and Human Values, uh, American Humanist Association. Uh, I'm forgetting so many, the, you know, 20 plus organizations are here sure. this weekend. And no one is like drawing a line in the sand or um, hiking their leg and marking their territory. How many metaphors can I put in this sentence? <laughs> Instead, we're all coming together and like rolling up our sleeves and saying, let's get to work. And uh, that's inspiring. 